Thomas Leo Crocker, originally from Kentucky, joined the Air Force after graduating from Ohio State in 74, and then have a variety of different jobs. As I got involved in public health, I had a variety of roles from uh, small installations with only like three or 4,000 people at a base to eventually being the consultant to the Air Force Surgeon General for all the people in the Air Force to include active duty guard and reserves. Epidemic diseases was one of my primary concerns during my military career because um, the study of epidemiology, understanding where the disease originated, who's at risk, what do we need to do to protect the men, women, the military and their families is critically important. Infectious diseases are a huge threat to military members and their families, not just in the United States and our cities and counties in Texas, but throughout the globe. Texas is one of the biggest states in the nation, uh, geographical-wise, but also military-wise. We have a lot of our uh, critical training resources in uh, the Texas area, so military health is very much dependent on health of our communities where we live, work, and play. And so as we move people from Europe or Afghanistan back to Texas from wherever we've deployed them to, there's that concern of will infectious diseases harm them or their family. So everything from tuberculosis to foodborne illness to vector-borne diseases, things like malaria, which we don't usually associate with Texas, but if our folks just came back from a deployment where they were stationed overseas, malaria could very well be diagnosed and cause morbidity or mortality in that particular population. And if we're unfortunate enough to have mosquitoes feed on them and then you know, fly across the fence to our neighbors, uh, it could be the start of an epidemic in a local community. So the military is not removed from the community, they're very much a part of the community. Whatever disease is impacting a community very much impacts the military families and, and in turn the military missions that uh, we're required to do to protect our nation from uh, adverse events. These are really a challenge that we face uh, in Texas and our military men and women, uh, their folks that work public health issues or infectious diseases need to be able to communicate effectively and work with the health, local health departments that they're involved with or where their families live. As much as we know, we probably won't know what the next emerging or re-emerging pathogen is gonna be. It's critically important that we continue to collaborate and communicate with each other so that we can trace the origins of these diseases or the countermeasures, whether it's a vaccine or an antibiotic or antimicrobial. When it comes to an outbreak or a different novel disease, how do we train these young men and women with a modicum of training to work with the Houston Health Department or the San Antonio Health Department. You know, my original degree prepared me to learn, but not to know everything. So I have to continue to grow and educate myself, just as our young men and women who join the military to become public health technicians need to learn and grow. And so I think um, the TEPI can help bridge some of the uh, gaps we have in our knowledge. The military, uh, is a learning organization. So if they can take short courses online or work collaboratively with their health department and do a TEPI related exercise, it goes a long way to improving their ability to do their jobs and protect their families and the families of those around them. You know, military members need to be doing their jobs, not being a patient in a hospital. Um, we need our families to be healthy so that we can go to work and do our jobs without worrying about, are they gonna be okay? Or are they gonna get the medical care they need? Pandemics happen and we'll have them again. And so preparing and collaborating and learning about how to respond, how to monitor your health of your population, critically important. Again, none of us know all the answers, but by collaboration, we can oftentimes find ways of improving our programs.